Hey what's up guys, today, I'll show you a horror fantasy film, Hellraiser, Part 3, Hell on Earth. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a good looking young man, smoking outside a gallery at night. With his leather jacket and cool demeanor, he's a typical bad boy. The man's name is JP, and he is the arrogant owner of a hip nightclub, called The Boiler Room. After a few moments, he steps inside the gallery with his cigarette and examines the artifacts on display. His attention is caught by a moving wooden pillar, carved with faces of demons delighting in the torture of humans. A scruffy man appears and offers the pillar to JP. He asks the scruffy man how much the art piece is, to which he mysteriously replies that the price is whatever JP wants it to be. So JP pulls out a wad of bills, and he becomes the new owner of the wooden pillar. What he doesn't notice is that on one of the columns is Pinhead's face, the sadistic leader of a group of otherworldly creatures called the Cenobites. Elsewhere, a young and hungry reporter named Joey is reporting from a very empty hospital emergency room. However, there are no interesting stories to be found in the emergency room. Joey is feeling sad about the state of her career. Suddenly, the Doran Hospital comes to life, with the arrival of a victim of a very brutal accident. A young man with chains on his flesh is being carted to the emergency room. Joey immediately identifies it as an interesting story and tries to speak with the young woman who came in with the patient. She tells Joey that she found the man like that inside the club, called the Boiler Room. A loud crash comes from the emergency room, and Joey runs inside to see what is happening. The patient is levitating a few feet from the operating table, and the chains on his flesh are electrified. The sparks intensify, and his whole body explodes. Joey watches the whole thing with a horrified look on her face. The next day at the station, a co-worker of Joey advises her to show a little skin, to entice the producers for more interesting stories. She gets offended by this, since she wants to build her career out of her own talent, rather than her hormones. She then tells his co-worker that she already has an interesting story she's working on. That night she visits the boiler room herself. It's a large nightclub, decorated to look like a dark dungeon of sin and debauchery. She asks around for Terry, the young woman who came in with the patient. Joey finds the owner of the nightclub, JP, and asks him where Terry is, after she heard that Terry might be his ex-girlfriend. But JP just feigns nonchalance and acts like he doesn't know who she's talking about. When she goes to sleep, Joey dreams of her father, who died fighting in the Vietnam War. She is woken up by the sound of the telephone. To her delight, it's Terry on the other end of the line. JP had kicked her out of his apartment, so she needs some place to stay. In exchange for letting her stay in Joey's apartment, Terry is willing to talk about the accident. A short while later, Terry is in Joey's apartment. Terry is still decked out in her gaudy nightclub attire, and she is clearly nervous about something. She asks Joey for a cigarette before she starts her story. She had seen the patient dancing in the club before, but didn't really know him that much. That night, Terry walked out of the club and saw him lying on the street, with chains embedded in his body. He moaned and pointed at a small puzzle box, and said that the chains came from there. This puzzle box is now in Terry's possession, and she shows it to Joey. Back in the boiler room, JP admires the wooden pillar he had recently acquired. He notices that there's a hole in one of the columns, the same hole where the patient had gotten the puzzle box. JP sticks his hand inside and is bitten by a rat hiding there. Blood spurts out of his wound and hits the wooden pillar. It turns out the blood is absorbed by Pinhead's carved face. The next morning, Terry attempts to cook breakfast for Joey, but just burns the food. She then tells her that she was the one who found the art gallery selling the wooden pillar. Terry thought the pillar would fit right in with the nightclub's decor, so she suggested that JP buy it. The two girls head to the gallery, but discover that it has been closed for a month. And yet, JP was just there the previous week. So Terry breaks into the gallery and finds files there that show that the wooden pillar and the puzzle box were acquired from the mental institution, as shown in the previous episode. Meanwhile, JP picks a pretty blonde girl in the club to be his flavor of the night. They sleep together in a loft upstairs, where he keeps some of his art pieces, including the wooden pillar. Terry and Joey go back to her apartment, with the files they took from the gallery. More papers reveal that the wooden pillar and the puzzle box are connected to a former patient of the mental institution, named Kirsty, the protagonist of the first two episodes. Joey contacts the manager of the institution's video archives to get the session tapes of Kirsty. She also asks Terry to stay longer at her apartment, since she has nowhere else to go. On the other side, the blonde gets upset with JP, because he discarded her right after they slept together. She screams at him right near the wooden pillar, and then suddenly hooks come out and tear her body apart, ending her blonde life. She gets absorbed by the carved face of Pinhead, and JP is astounded. Pinhead now becomes stronger after absorbing the blonde's essence, and mostly her hormones. So he is now able to talk to JP. He tells JP to help him devour more souls, so he could be free in the human world. But JP does not condone his evil actions, 
so he pulls out a gun and then shoots Pinhead three times, trying to make him a bullet head. But the creature merely spits out the bullets and continues talking smelly bullshit. He tells JP that he knows that that is the same gun he used to kill his parents, so he could inherit his fortune. Pinhead recognizes JP lust for power, and he will help him get everything he wants, in return for JP feeding him more souls. This is tempting for JP, and he agrees. The next day, Joey receives the videotape from the institution's archives. It depicts Kirstie's psychiatric sessions when she was institutionalized after the events of the first episode. The doctor asks her about the puzzled box, and she describes how her instincts helped her solve it, and how the box opened a portal to the Cenobites dimension where they tortured people. Meanwhile, back at Joey's apartment, Terry gets a call from JP. He says that he misses her and asks her to come back to him. Unable to leave her newfound friendship with Joey, she refuses her ex-boyfriend's advances. However, just moments later, she hears a voicemail, informing Joey that she had gotten a position as a reporter in Monterey. Terry feels betrayed by Joey, because she thought that she could stay with Joey for a while, and they had a good thing going. Later on, Joey comes home to an empty and messy apartment. She discovers a note from Terry, saying that she is a liar. Terry runs back to JP Hormone Let Go Arms, and he welcomes her back to his apartment above the nightclub. The wooden pillar is now inside, carved anew with the soul of the blonde girl. Joey dreams of her father during the war again, but something's different. She is now in a World War I trench, and people are dying all around her. A soldier welcomes her, and Joey screams as she wakes up. The TV beside her bed flickers to life, and the same soldier's face appears on the screen and pleads for her help. Back in JP apartment, he tries to get back into Terry's good graces. He stands near the wooden pillar and asks her to give him a hug. She gets closer, and he drags her to Pinhead to be consumed, but Terry hits him in the face and knocks him out. Pinhead makes her an offer, he will transform her into a Cenobite, and give her power and pleasure beyond her imagination, if she chooses to take over JP role. Intrigued by what he is offering, she feeds JP to Pinhead. Then several hooks cure JP head, and his body gets devoured. This is the final sacrifice that Pinhead is waiting for, and he emerges from the wooden pillar, as the terrifying creature of pain. Meanwhile, Joey gets up from her bed, and discovers that she is having a vision of another era in the past. A voice orders her to go to the window, and she unfurls the curtains. Before her is the same soldier from her dream, sitting alone in a dimly lit room. Joey enters the room, but the soldier doesn't appear to notice her. A side door opens, and she walks out into the same trenches she was in earlier. But this time, the battle is over, and dead bodies are strewn all over the camp. The soldier once again appears, and introduces himself as Captain Spencer. He explains that they are both in the world between heaven and hell. He then starts to tell the story. Ravaged by the horrors he had seen in the war, Spencer turned to pleasure and pain. On this macabre quest, he stumbled upon the puzzled box, that promised to unleash incomparable pleasure. He opened it, and was transported to the dimension of the Cenobites, where he was transformed into Pinhead. As the leader of the Cenobites, he had no memory of the man he once was, until Kersey freed him from his curse. While the ghost of Spencer retained his goodness and humanity, his Pinhead persona was left behind in the wooden pillar. For years, Pinhead had remained trapped there, until JP Blood awakened him. Now Spencer is enlisting Joey's help, to finally end Pinhead once and for all. The plan is that Joey will use the box to lure Pinhead to her apartment. She will then trap him in Spencer's dimension, where he has the power to take Pinhead down. The boiler room is packed as usual, with clubbers looking for a good time. What they don't know is that they will experience hell soon. Pinhead appears and locks the doors. He starts killing the clubbers, by fleeing chains with hooks at them. He eviscerates and slices them as screams fill the room. Joey sees the news on TV, and calls her cameraman to meet her at the club. Before she leaves, she tucks the puzzle box inside her pocket. Her cameraman lives closer to the club, so he arrives there earlier. When Joey gets there, she sees his car parked in front, but he is nowhere to be seen. She climbs up the fire exit, and steps inside the club, where she sees dead people everywhere. In the corner is the cameraman, with his decapitated head on his lap. Pan appears before Joey, and offers her a quick death in exchange for the puzzle box. Joey defiantly refuses, and runs out of the club with a puzzle box. Explosions rock the streets as she continues to run. Hooks spring out of a sewer, and catch the fabric of her shirt. Joey frees herself, and runs to hide between buildings. Along the way, she runs into a man who tries to calm her down. She screams at him to run, but her cameraman, who has now been turned into a Cenobite with a camera instead of an eye, shoots a hole right through the man's head. More and more Cenobites chase after Joey. Fortunately, two police cars arrive at the scene, and the cops attempt to deter them. But the Cenobites douse them with gasoline, and light them on fire. Joey then seeks refuge in a church, where she frantically tells the priest that demons are coming after her. The priest doesn't believe her at first, but the appalling sight of Pinhead quickly changes his mind. 
The priest brandishes an iron cross, but it doesn't have any effect on Pinhead, possibly because of the bulletproof pins around his head. The creature merely cackles and melts the cross, burning the priest's hand in the process. Pinhead proceeds with desecrating the church and mocking Jesus Christ by reciting Bible verses and acting like he's being nailed on the cross. The priest is deeply offended by this and attacks Pinhead. But he is no match for him, and Pinhead is about to kill him when Joey distracts him with the puzzle box. She runs out into the street again and goes inside a construction site. But newly turned Cenobites, Terry and JP, follow her there. Terry now has a cigarette in her throat, while her ex-boyfriend has a drill running through his head. The other Cenobites follow along with Pinhead. Joey picks up the puzzle box and desperately tries to unlock it. She is successful and banishes the other Cenobites to hell. But the box also transports her to the dream dimension between heaven and hell. She is now back in the field from her dreams of her father. He emerges from the trees and warmly hugs her. Joey is overjoyed at finally meeting her father. He explains that someone had told him there is something that she has to give him. Completely blinded by her happiness, Joey gives him the puzzle box. However, she does not realize that it is just Pinhead pretending to be her father. Pinhead grabs the puzzle box and shows his true self. The idyllic field becomes a red-tinged dungeon. He taunts Joey by saying that he has invaded her mind and used her dreams to get her to give him the box. Right then, Captain Spencer appears and tells Pinhead that it is he who has fallen into a trap. He is now in the dream dimension, and Spencer can take him down. But Pinhead won't go down without a fight. He binds and chains Joey in preparation for turning her into another Cenobite. He then tries to tempt Spencer into turning to the dark side by offering that they torture her together, since Pinhead believes that the same sadistic urges still reside within Spencer's heart. But Spencer resists the temptation and fights Pinhead. He forces the two of them to meld together. For a final touch, Joey gets free of her shackles and grabs the puzzle box, which is turned into a dagger. Without further ado, she stabs Pinhead with it. This move successfully banishes the monster from this world. Joey opens her eyes, only to see she's now back at the construction site. But she is now alone, and there is no Cenobite anywhere. She takes the puzzle box and buries it in the site. It's then revealed that the building being constructed turns out to look exactly like a large version of the puzzle box, signifying that the box's power will not be buried. And it is only a matter of time before it ensnares people again. This is Daniel's CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.